All right, so let's talk brand personality today. Let's talk about brand personality. So let me tell you what what brought this on. So, um, you know, I went to get my hair done. And uh, while I, you know, I had already made my appointment and I got a call from someone who was like, oh, who does your hair? And I was like, oh, uh, this stylist that I use over here and um, she's very good and blah, blah, blah. And this person said, well, why don't you give me a try? I, you know, I'm, I'm a luxury um, hairstylist. And as soon as he said he was a luxury hairstylist, it immediately sent me down a rabbit hole. And I don't know if any of you all can relate to this or if we're willing to be honest about it, but I think that sometimes we we say that we are one thing, but then we portray another thing. And we think that if we just say it, that makes it so. And so when he said that he is uh, he has a luxury salon and, you know, um, he's a luxury stylist, you know, I was like, oh, so what does that mean? You know, I wanted to know, like, what does that mean? And he just was talking about how he likes to do hair for VIP clients. Um, he got to name it off all of the clients that he's worked with. And that's pretty much all he had. And I was like, okay. So in my mind, I'm thinking, so you charge a whole lot more because you have done the hair of some VIP people who we don't even know. Like the names he was saying, I had no clue who they were and some I would have zero respect for him like he recently did sexy reds hair that's not moving me as a matter of fact I'm going the other way so I thought that I come here today and we talk about branding as we are in the process of building our businesses and branding now I me personally I think that brands evolve on their own I could be wrong I'm just telling you what I believe I believe that uh, people will say what they will about your brand by the work that you put out by what it is you create so i want you to i'm going to share some brand personalities and some brand energy with you because i think that we confuse the energy that's needed that needs to go into a brand being a brand so i'm gonna start with the luxury brand since that was the topic of discussion so when we are talking about a luxury brand, it typically, and think about the energy that goes along with this, the energy that that brand should exude, the personality that that brand should exude. It's more than just saying that this is what it is. We should also feel that that's what it is. It should be communicated that that's what this is. So let me just go into it. So when we're talking about a luxury brand, we're normally dealing with a lot of opulence. We're dealing with some indulgence that we typically wouldn't have. There is a total sense of abundance, okay, in a luxury brand. There is exclusivity in a luxury brand. It's not for everyone. Think about your Tom Fords and your Chanel's and your Louis Vuitton's and, you know, all of the ones now, I can't think of the bag now that you got to order you can't even just walk in the store and get it. There is exclusivity with those brands. There's refinement with those brands. The folks have worked to make it the highest level possible. There is typically elegance in a luxury brand. It's always coming from high quality material, material that is sourced from a particular location in a particular way. And the crafts, the craftsmanship is, is, just high quality like there is a lot of time and attention put into how the thing is made the the attention to detail is second to none there is prestige with it and it typically exudes status think about what i'm saying and then it it in some ways has to enhance it has to enhance so when you're thinking I want to have a luxury brand. Who are the people that you're catering to? Because those are the people who buy luxury brands. And what is it? How would they know that you're a luxury brand? And so for the example that I gave you, there was nothing about him, the way he shows up, 
the way he presents himself, nothing about his shop, nothing even about the way that he does hair to say that he's a luxury stylist. There is no, at, at, like I thought that he was confused with the word that he was using. Truly I did, I'm not even trying to be funny. I thought he was confused. And so when I said, well, what is the luxury? What's the luxury? And he went into the detail. He didn't know what it was because truly he is confused because first of all, he's not operating from a sense of abundance. First of all, the energy that comes from him, nowhere near a sense of abundance. There is no refinement. There is no elegance. He does not display any sense of elegance. And even the wigs that he showed me that he had created as, as the sample that he was showing me, there was nothing unique about it. There was nothing that stood out about him. There was nothing that would make you say, oh, this right here, this is amazing. I got to have one of those. No, I can go and really get one off of Amazon. And I really don't think you could tell the difference. Even when we talked about what products he uses, He's using the same thing everybody else is using. So I want us to think about that when we think about our brands. But I got a couple more for you because I really want you to be able to identify your brand and be able to speak to it confidently, but also be able to make sure that it's communicating what it is you want it to communicate. Now, you all know, I don't claim to have a luxury brand. I am very clear. I have a boutique style brand. I am a boutique style ed consulting company. You can find that on my website. I will communicate that to you. It's in my info deck. It's everywhere that you look to find me. It shows that I am a boutique style education company. And what does that mean? Normally when something is boutique style, it's smaller. It, there's an association with boutiques and smaller. You, you know, you've been to a boutique before. And boutiques normally specialize in they have specialized products or businesses or services that they specialize in. So they, they don't have a hundred of anything. Everything is very specialized. Everything is very unique and handcrafted. Everything is unique and handcrafted. There are no mass produced anything in a boutique. You've been to a boutique before. There's typically limited quantity. And there is high quality and attention to detail. When you go into high-end boutiques, what, what's the difference between a boutique and a Goodwill? Both of them are selling used items. What's the difference between them? How do they look different when you show up there? And then you got to think about the personalized service. When you all think about working with me, how many groups have you all been in where the coach, guide, mentor knows your name, knows about your business, will reach out to you, will call you out because they actually have worked to develop a relationship with you or at least an understanding of the coaching situation. So that's what's meant by boutique. It's, very, uh, it's a very personalized service. Even in my consulting, all of my people have my phone number. I know each one of them. I know their wives' names. I know how many kids they have. And it's not just knowing to memorize. It's because we talk. I know the people. It's a very personalized service. And then distinctive. Boutiques have this. They, they are distinctive. You won't find two boutiques that are alike. You won't find it. That's the purpose of them being a boutique. And they are typically niche focused. You might go to a boutique that focuses on just purses, or you might go to a boutique that focuses only on authentic shoes, you know, the, the red bottoms or whatever you want to call them. They're typically niche focused. My niche is leadership coaching. It's normally an independent ownership situation. It's not a conglomerate. It's not a franchise situation. It's normally independent uh, ownership. And then there are curated selections. They have seeked certain goods that they would like in the boutique for their clientele. They have curated services, but overall they're different from mainstream. You will not go into a boutique and find the same thing you're going to find at Walmart, Target, Macy's, or Nordstrom's. 
They have a lot of the same things. In a boutique, they have curated selections and they are different from mainstream. So you gotta understand your brand, what it is you're working to create. This didn't happen by happenstance. This did not happen by happenstance. I'm in a position where I could easily employ 30, 40, 60 consultants, send them out to do the work and rake in the cash, but I wouldn't be boutique anymore. I appreciate the boutique space. I appreciate the smaller clientele. I appreciate my ability to be able to get to work with the leaders and know the leaders. Does that mean I can't have anybody work for me? No, that's not what that means. I, I contract with consultants quite often, but it means that I understand the level of quality that I want my clients to have. And in that level of quality, I know that if it's 60, 80 people, it's gonna, the ball is gonna be dropped somewhat, somewhere. So understand, that's boutique style. So here's another one, simplicity. Maybe you are thinking, I, I just want to be a very simplistic company. I just want to operate without complexity, really focus on the essentials. Your main focus is efficiency and a sense of ease. And there's a lot of tranquility and balance you understand con contentment, you provide immense clarity, there's a level of minimalism in it, there is still purpose, but you have practiced the art of letting go. The these are simplistic companies. Your brand could be a very simplistic brand. I wanna get in, I wanna get out. I don't want all that complex stuff. Let me focus on the essentials, get in here, get out, I'm going to show you the efficient ways to do it. We're going to do this with ease and grace. We're going to have balance. We're going to do what we need to do at work, but then we're leaving work and we're going home. And that's okay. That's okay. Understand your brand. Understand your brand. And then there are what we call lifestyle brands. Now, oh, excuse me. Now, when you think about lifestyle brands, these are associated with a particular way of life okay, or a specific culture so that we know, we know that we have a lot of black culture lifestyle brands, but it has to align to certain lifestyles, okay, either values or aspirations, it has to be totally align aligned, so let me give you an example so you get a better understanding of what I'm talking about, so we have outdoor lifestyle brands, you can think of an outdoor lifestyle brand, or, or better yet, you can think of a wellness brand. A wellness brand is a specific way of life. You know, think about the vegans. They, that's a whole brand. You know, when you think about Tabitha Brown, Tabitha Brown is a lifestyle brand. She is a vegan. That is what she values. That's what she's talking about. And so that is a lifestyle brand. So, you, so that's an example that I could just come up with right here on the spot. So maybe you are a lifestyle brand or aspire to be a lifestyle brand. One that is very popular these days, they are sustainable and eco-friendly brands. Those sustainability and eco-friendly brands, they're totally committed to environment and social responsibility, point blank period. They're just eco-friendly. They have ethical practices. They source their materials from certain places. They have rules inside of their business that, you know, speak to their ethics and they have environmentally conscious consumers. People will seek them out to purchase their products because they are an eco-friendly or a sustainable company. And I'm sure you can think of one or two of them right now. All right, so the last one that I'm gonna share with you, and again, I'm just trying to give you some ideas to make sure that you understand your brand, what you're working towards, how you show up, how people perceive you, because it matters. You can say it all day long, but that don't make it so. Okay, so the last one is an innovative brand. And with innovative brands, those are brands, and I know you're thinking of one right now. All of us should be thinking of one. As a matter of fact, we should be thinking of two. Uh, they are pushing the boundaries. They are leading technological advancements. They have the design down. They know how to design things in a very futuristic, 
um, way that is different from what we normally see using extreme creativity and not being afraid to go outside the boundaries. And they are continuously, continuously introducing new ideas, new products, new services that will disrupt the marketplace. Now, I know some of y'all should be thinking some brands right now. And when I said that will disrupt the marketplace, think about Apple, think about Tesla, Tesla totally disrupted the automotive market because they introduced a, an electric car and they continue to disrupt the market, even not just with the new cars that they're creating, but with the technology that they're putting into the cars, the, the things that they're doing. And so understand that before you call yourself an innovative brand, make sure that you are truly pushing boundaries. I hear a lot of people say, that they're a tech company and they're an innovative brand, but they're not doing anything new. They're not doing anything that's pushing the boundaries. They're not designing anything that is cutting edge. You're just, a, you're confused about your brand. So what I want you to think about is, what is your brand's personality? We need to know this. I want you to stop and think about this. And you might wanna write these questions down so that you can come back to it. Because in the very beginning, we don't always know what our brand's personality is. We're just trying to get the work done, trying to do it, and it will evolve and come out over time, okay? When I started out, you think I said, oh, I'm gonna be a boutique style brand? No, I started out and I was collecting contracts and I was doing the work. And at one point I was like this too, I don't, I don't like this. I liked it when I had this many clients and then I had time to do what I was trying to do and I could do this and do that. So then when I identified what it was that I liked, then I said, well, I'm not going to take on more than eight clients in a year if they are big jobs because I, that's not what I want. That's not, I don't want that. I don't want to not know the people when I walk into a building. I don't want to just have them as another number or another paycheck. That's not what I wanted. But I wasn't walking around saying, oh, I want to be a boutique brand. And then when I started thinking about my branding and what resonated with me and what I was really doing, and I was like, oh, I'm a boutique brand. I'm a, I have a boutique style business and everything lined up. But w like with the young man who was talking to me about the hair, nothing about him said luxury, nothing about his service said luxury, nothing about his product said luxury. Nothing about the way he looked said luxury. Nothing about the way he represented his business said, said luxury. Nothing about the energy that was exuded from the business or from him said luxury. And a lot of us, we have to understand that we are the face of our business at this point. We represent our business. So you have to think to yourself, am I representing what it is I say that I'm representing? So you need to think about how do you want your clients to perceive your business and emotionally connect with your brand? How do you want them to do that? And how are they currently doing that? Do you know? And then here's one of the big questions that I really want you to ponder on. Some of you all probably already know the answer and others will not even uh, be thinking about how this connects, but what narrative do you tell to convey your story? Your brand has a story. What's the story behind that brand? And what's the narrative that you're using to convey that? Because sometimes we get really confused and we think that we don't have to, like a lot of times we wanna hold our story close to our chest so that nobody gets inside. You gotta be able to tell your story. You gotta be able to tell the story of that brand and we're gonna be real honest here. Our stories of our brands is not, I just don't wanna see another kid suffer. I think that every kid should have a right to education. I think that every kid should know how to pick a career. That is not your brand story. Your brand story has to do with you and, and what connected you to this work. And so the, the sooner you figure out how to walk through that narrative the sooner your ideal client will be able to connect with you. I am very clear about my brand story. I've been in the school system for 17 years. 
Nothing was really wrong, but I knew that there was more. When I pulled up to that parking lot that moment, that morning, and got ready to get out of that vehicle, and was was shocked and overcome by this moment in time where I realized I got to do this exact same thing for another 13 years. I wanted to throw up in my mouth. I did not want to exist like that. I was in a successful building. I was with a group of teachers who knew how to work with me. We had done what we needed to do. We had moved the students up to the, I mean, the uh, building up to the 55th percentile in the state of Missouri. I was getting the accolades. The people were looking for me. I could take any superintendent job that I wanted. I could be an assistant superintendent. I didn't want to spend my time like that anymore. I didn't want to spend my time like that. I didn't want to be at work while my boys were growing up and I, were, I was missing the most precious years of their life. I wanted to be able to spend time with my husband. And more importantly, I don't want to keep robbing Peter to pay Paul while Mary and Jane still sitting over there saying, Chanel, you owe me some money. I knew that there was more and it was in me but I had to be willing to take a risk and step out. And I knew that I was skilled at what it was that I did, but I didn't know how to turn it into something that would be more lucrative. And so that's why I'm here with you today, because I knew that there was more, just like you knew that there was more. And just like I needed guidance and support that I didn't have accessible to me, I'm going to make sure it's accessible to you. So what is your brand story? What is the narrative that you tell to convey your story? Is it one of hope? Is it one of resilience? Is it one of overcoming? Or is it one of pity, one of sadness, one of anger, one of they did me wrong? So I want you to think about that. Then I want you to think about what sets you apart. What is it that sets you apart from other uh, consultants, from other folks who do this work? What is it that sets you apart? You need to be able to, to know this. You need to know what your differentiators are. And it's not the number of years that you've been teaching because that don't set you apart. Unless, of course, you've been teaching for 50 or 70 years. Now, that will set you apart. But if you've just been teaching for 10, 15, 20, 30 years, honey, you ain't did no more than nobody else done done. Okay, that don't set you apart. Because you got a doctoral degree, that don't set you apart from nobody else. None of them certifications you got, that don't set you apart. I'm a National Board Certified Teacher. That don't set me apart, even though only 1% of teachers in the United States of America are National Board Certified. But what is it that really sets you apart? And then ask yourself this question. If your business were a person, how would others describe his personality? Would it be moody? Would it be non-existent? Do you not show up? Do you show up one day and then they don't see you again for three weeks? If your business were a person, how would others describe its personality and its values? I want you to think about that. I want you to think about that. And a lot of times we think that because we say it, that makes it so. But perception is reality. Perception is truly reality. I need us to understand that. And it's not your perception. That's your perception is your reality. But the perception is of others is their reality. And so if they perceive you as the things that they perceive you as, then that's what your brand is. That's what your brand is. You know, if you don't follow through, if you don't show up, if you're non-existent, if you don't do anything to give your business a reputation, a brand, some values, then people will make up their own. They will make up their own. It's a reason why people keep lowballing you. They keep lowballing you because it's something about your brand. And then that's not to say everybody doesn't want a premium brand business. <coughs> and let me be clear, there's a difference between premium and luxury. Two different things, two very different things. You can look it up yourself. And so I want us to understand you don't have to have a premium business. You don't have to have a luxury business. Maybe you just want a simplistic business. You know, it's okay. You need to make sure that you are building what it is you desire because this is all about you and your dream life and not other people and what they want from you or what other people say you should have. There are a lot of people who tell me that I need to have a big consulting company and bring all of these consultants in under me 
and let them go out and do the work and you just sit back. I, that's not what I asked for. That's not where my joy is. I know where my joy is. I know where my contentment is. And, and I'm moving deeper into that. So know what your brand is, what it is that you're creating, what it is that you're desiring, what it is that you're wanting. And leave it in the comments. Let me know. Let me know what it is you're thinking, what it is you're building, what it is you're aspiring for. And, you know, go for it. Scott, there are no limits. I was going to say the sky is the limit, but it's not. My son told me that when he was three. Okay. So there are no limits. Go for it. Abundance is your birthright. Make it happen and just be okay with it. Y'all have a good rest of your day.